So I decided to start a video blog for all my weddings uh, that I shoot. I wanted to talk a bit about how they went on the day, what I felt could have gone better maybe, um, and overall just kind of give you some kind of perspective into how I shoot my wedding films. The reason I've decided to do it as a vlog as opposed to a blog is because I just felt I don't really enjoy writing that much. I love using the camera. I love. I don't love necessarily love being in front of it, but I do like using it. And I thought, you know what? I've started teaching at a university now. I might as well just apply how I present myself to my students and just apply it to my blogs. So here I am. I hope you enjoy it. I'm just going to roll my intro. <laughs> Just a little bit about the couple, um, Vicky and Luke. Genuinely really nice people. Uh, Vicky contacted me on Facebook after having seen my work through a friend of a friend, uh, which was really nice. I uh, find genuinely most of my work comes through recommendations and referrals from other clients that I've worked for in the past. I met with Vicky about a month prior to the wedding. I know it's super, leaving it super late, but it worked out. What struck me the most about this couple were just how comfortable they really were with one another. Um, and I think that shows on their film, the final film, it just, they just work. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, and it was at the Lion Keys Hotel and Spa, or yeah, Hotel and Spa, something like that. Previously I'd shot there for a friend of mine, um, kind of did what he said, you know, that kind of thing. But I was kind of used to the venue, it changed a little bit since then. <laughs> They'd, uh, they even renovated the restaurant area and it just looked great, like what they'd done. What I loved the most about um, shooting here was the ceremony. Like I absolutely loved shooting the ceremony because it, it wasn't in a church. With churches you get all those kind of restrictions, you get, um, you know, the seats are like aligned on the side and they go up against the walls, which restricts me as a filmmaker, I can't move around. Um, whereas this one, it was a service, it was, it was in, in one of the rooms in the hotel. Uh, which meant I could just go down the sides and I could go around. Uh, I had more flexibility as a shooter just to do what I wanted really. The best thing about it was that I could get both the angles of the groom and the bride. So, you know, I could switch <laughs> from the other side to get the groom's perspective, get two nice close-ups, which I can mix then with the wide shot that I shot from the back. My friend Sarah, um, who's been helping me uh, quite recently in my weddings, does a great job. She was shooting the wide from the back, the master, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, it was just great. We got all around really good coverage of the service and it was lovely. It was just really nice. I can't wait to actually put that one together. Um, let's grab that. I've already put it together by the time this vlog comes out. Another thing that was really nice was there was a harpist. She was lovely. I got in touch with her and I managed to actually use a bit of her music over the top of the ceremony. So it kind of sort of brings that sort of personal touch, which I like, to my weddings. The weather that day was awful. Like it was raining nonstop. I mean, I'm not surprised it was September, but you know, sometimes around the end of September, you get that kind of like dry, sort of dry spell, you get that kind of heat wave, and that, that works out nicely. But this time it was just raining throughout and it was a nightmare. I couldn't get any of the exterior shots I really wanted to. Kind of, I thought about it, I thought about it creatively, how can I put this together and still get those shots outside that I want, but make it look romantic? Macro shots are the one. They worked really well, like getting some nice detail shots of the leaves, the rain drops falling on those leaves and just like, you know, things like that outside. It just looked really nice and I started thinking, this could make a cool little intro. You know, just the sound of rain, um, the, the, the boughs over the top building up to the ceremony and it just, yeah, it all worked out really nicely. I thought this is different from what I've done before. Uh, I was quite happy how it came out. Yeah. Speeches. Possibly my, oh, my girlfriend's ringing. You all right, mate? Oh, it's good to get some fresh air, isn't it? I've had a parcel delivered. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, where were we? Okay, I talked a bit about... Have I talked about the speeches? Well, I'll go over them again just in case. Speeches. Um, for me, I find this like one of the most challenging aspects of the day. Uh, <laughs> mainly because the audio can be an absolute nightmare on the day. It's just tricky to kind of get it right. Normally with my speeches, um, I do two different angles, one wide of the person giving the speech 
and then a close up so I can sort of cut between that on the on the in the edit. With this one I wanted to try something different. I thought, yeah, you, know, you don't need to have two different cuts of the same person. I thought one cut will suffice. And instead I'll concentrate on getting reaction shots. Uh, and it kind of worked out better. So what I did was put the microphone into my recorder, put it popped on a mini tripod onto the table, and I just moved it along the table as as it changed as they changed speak, uh, speaker. And it sounded great. I'm not gonna lie, like I was really happy with how this one sounded. Um, I don't normally say that often about my speeches. Um, obviously I'm being really picky because I'm a filmmaker, I, you know, I have that kind of OCD about things, I want to be absolutely perfect. To most people, the speeches on all my wedding films have sounded fine, like, you know, but for me I just wanted that, that absolute perfection. <laughs> I got Sarah to concentrate on just making sure the master shot of the speech was captured and I just went around with a monopod. Um, 70 to 200 mil lens and captured loads of different angles and the shot sizes of the reactions from people just like you know laughing kind of crying that kind of thing it just looks really good how it's all cut together it's just nice and simple stress-free speech part of the day done um, first dance um, I got some nice shots but it was so short that it was hard to really get a lot of different angles of the first dance I only kind of got the one or two shots and they looked nice what I got was was good but I just wish I had a bit more time to, to go around and get some different perspectives of their dance. Um, and that's fine, it happens, you know, not everyone's comfortable dancing in front of people, not everyone wants to dance for that long, and that's fine, because the dancing I got afterwards looked really cool. Got some great moments, some, uh, there was this cute little kid dancing along the, uh, the smoke machine, and it just looked really cool with the lights flickering off it. It wasn't until much later on when people really started dancing, unfortunately it was getting quite late then, I don't, like to stay, like, I don't really like to stay past half nine, if I can avoid it. Normally I wrap up by nine and go, but sometimes it just takes a little bit longer for people to get into the swing of things and feel more comfortable dancing. So I like to just wait around, see what happens, because for me, just capturing people dancing, all those happy expressions, it's, it, makes the, it makes the day. Oh yeah, and I lost my favorite blazer. I absolutely loved it and it just, I have no idea what went. I, I spent like a good half an hour after I was supposed to have gone just looking around and it was nowhere. You know, of all the things I could have lost, it was you know probably the better thing to lose. Uh, I'm thankful it wasn't my gear. <laughs> and now I don't have it anymore. Cool, that's me done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel um, and tune in next time for my vlog on Charlotte and Jacob. That was me trying to clap to, you know, clap on the beat.